What's the word, y'all? All right, man, we are diverting away from our normal recap schedule. Yesterday, I missed the entire slate of games live because I was at the White Sox game throwing out the first pitch. I'm dropping a video on Kenny Baseball about that, an amazing experience. And today, I just kind of want to chill with my daughter, man. I did watch the games, but I didn't watch, watch the games enough to do your recap. And they were blowouts anyway. What is there to say? Devin Booker's a hooper and same thing with Jimmy Butler. Like, I, you knew those things. So instead, we are diverting a little bit and we're doing this Bleach Report article. Okay, y'all know we love trades. I'm a main channel. I'm a pseudo general manager. I love thinking about trades. Trades are some of the most fun things about sports in general, not just basketball. And I love reacting to Bleach Report trades because it seemed like Bleach Report articles are either a lot of hits or a lot of misses. And the, this was sent to me by 2K Masai over on Twitter. And he said, Kenny, you got to do a video about it. And he sent me one screenshot of a trade and it was terrible. So I'm assuming that a lot of the trades in this, <laughs> in this video are bad. But uh, I want to say I am not attacking the, art the Arthur over here. A shout out to Greg Schwartz. But it's hard to put together good trades. But he gave us one from every team and let's be honest you, there's no way you put together 30 great trades so we about that we about to see immediately off rip i'm a little bit concerned because this screenshot makes it seem like either these two are going to be teaming up and getting traded for each other either way i gotta see how you put that together mr greg all right shout out to bleach report if you didn't know i work with bleach report on occasions but that does not stop me from tearing shreds of an article or, or things that go on you gotta hold people accountable you feel me atlanta hawks malcolm brogdon buddy Hill for john college have heard i'm pretty sure this is the trait that i saw originally that made me want to see this uh do this video I just don't understand it from the Atlanta Hawks perspective. If you're the, the Indiana Pacers, sure, you trade away two older players for two younger players. Boom. Now you got Tyrese Halliburton and a live threat in John Collins. You got some shooting and some scoring. But if I'm the Atlanta Hawks, I mean, are we just going for a secondary ball handler for, for Trey Young? So it's like Trey Young, Bogdanovich, Malcolm Brogdon, DeAndre Hunter, and Clay Capella. I mean, I'd rather just keep this. It's not Malcolm Brogdon doesn't increase my ceiling so much that I think we can get back to the conference finals. I don't think this right here puts us back in the conference finals, especially with bro right here cannot stay healthy for. 70% of the season. Pass. 0 for 1. Next one, Boston Celtics. Terrence Ross for a second round pick in the trade exception. This is a nothing trade, but it says right here the Celtics rank 26 overall in bench scoring. Terrence Ross to score at least a little bit. I'm moving on to the next one. And it's kind of juicy. Okay. I see Ben Simmons named out here. Jeremy Grant, Kelly Olenek, Corey Joe for Ben Simmons. This is a very interesting trade. Um, and I'm mostly saying it's interesting because I'm trying to figure out from the Boston, nope, from the Detroit Pistons perspective, would I do this deal if I was the general manager of the Pistons? If I'm not mistaken, Jeremy Grant is on the last year of his deal. Kelly Olenek, I mean, he had an okay season for you, but he's not a guy that you keep around because you're trying to build with him. Corey Joe, backup point guard who ain't been great. Uh, yeah, he have his moments for sure. For Ben Simmons or a version of Ben Simmons. We don't know what that version of Ben We don't know what that Ben Simmons is, right? But with this trade, you're basically uh, tying a bunch of money into Ben Simmons. When you have a lot of cap space in Detroit this offseason and next offseason if you get Jeremy Grant off the books. I don't know how to feel about this trade, man. If I'm the Brooklyn Nets, I have to subvert my expectations for Ben Simmons when he finally comes back because a back surgery is nothing you sneeze at, you know? I don't know. Next one. Steven Adams for James Booknight and Mason Plum. This is a terrible trade. If I'm the uh, Charlotte Hornets, like, yeah, we desperately need center play, but I'm not giving up on 17-year-old James Booknight. Or he might be 20 at this point, honestly, to get Steven Adams for, what, a season, two seasons? And and Steven Adams, sure, of course, helps your team be better, but he's not helping your team be like a top five seed, which is probably what you're looking for. If you're the Charlotte Hornets, you're not just trying to be a playing team no more. You're trying to be top six seed is what I mean, and this don't really do it. Hell, if I'm Booknight, I'm saying yes, because maybe I can get some PT over there with the Grizzlies because the Hornets decided not to play me this season. But you know, you got a new coach coming in, so who knows? I don't like this trade at all for the Hornets. And if I'm the Grizz, I mean, I guess. I mean, it's kind of a log jam over there with the guard position. Of course, you got Ja, Tyus Jones, who's up for an extension or going to hit free agency. Then you got Dylan Brooks, DeAnthony Melton. You got uh, uh, John Contra. There's a lot of players that he'd be fighting for minutes for, so I don't even know. Chicago Bulls, let me hear it. Rudy Gobert for Patrick Williams, <sighs> Nikola Vucevic, and Javante Grave. I would do this trade if it wasn't Patrick Williams in it. If instead we were giving up Kobe White, I would do this trade. Um, and I understand some the, whatever team trades Rudy Gobert is going to be paying him when he's like 26 and you're going to be paying him a lot or oh, 36 you're going to be paying him a lot of money and I'm putting a lot of lot of money when he turns 36 37 um and maybe that's not something you want to do but I watched this Bulls team struggle defensively and a lot of that came from the five position Vucevic is just not well, I mean we didn't trade for him to be a defensive center in the first place obviously but a lot of the times I felt like the the offense didn't make up for the lack of defense and Rudy Gobert say what you want about him I know a lot of people hate Rudy Gobert I'm still a Rudy Gobert fan and I think he would look kind of decent here in Chicago because we have other 
other people, like whether it be Caruso, Lonzo Ball, that will help him defensively, and he's never really had any help defensively, other than like Royce O'Neal occasionally. So if it wasn't for Patrick Williams being in this trade, I would do this. In my personal opinion, Patrick Williams should be untouchable still, uh, just because we have a rookie season and then like 10 games of him in his sophomore year. I still don't know what, what to expect from him, and because of that, I won't trade him away in year number two, or I guess going into year number three. Next, Cleveland Cavaliers. Vontae Graham for Jetty Osmond. Dylan Windler in a second round pick. Personally, I would not do this trade if I'm the Cavaliers. I'm not adding another 6'1 guard to my rotation when I already got Darius Garden. I already got Kyle Sexton coming back from his injury. I'm not adding another dude. I mean, he's a high volume three point shooter that can make him occasionally, and he's he's very good off the catch and shoot. Is he very good off the dribble? He's very good at either one of the two of off the dribble or off catch and shoot. I always mix it up. Um, but see, I'm not doing this trade to add another small guard into my rotation, especially what we just saw in this first round series against the the Phoenix Suns. It's not that he's a, he's not unplayable in the playoffs but he's probably relegated to like 12 minutes and I know that Jetty Osmond could give me some solid minutes if we were to make a playoffs push so I don't like this trade I, I at all of these trades how many of them have I liked zero a question mark a question mark Ah, it's kind of rough out here. Next, uh, Dallas Mavericks, Zach Hollis for Davis Bertans in two seconds. This is like dumping off Davis Bertans' contract. I, I completely understand it for Zach Hollins, who I think signed a two-year deal, maybe a three-year deal, but it wasn't worth a lot of money. I mean, I guess if I'm the Dallas Mavericks, I do this, even though Davis Bertans been giving him somewhat decent minutes um, in this playoff series, in this current playoff series. But when you think about the longevity of his contract, of course, you want to get rid of that if you want to build around Luka, and you got to throw in two second-round picks to get it done. I guess this is another trade that's kind of a nothing trade. I was hoping they put together a big slam and jammer to get Luka a second player other than Jalen Brunson but I guess not I guess it's Zach Collins to help with the salary stuff and yes salary shedding and blah, blah, blah. I know it's a big part of basketball sports in general when you do the salary dumps and stuff like that but it's like a nine times out of ten it's a yawn fest for me and I'm not interested in it Fort Con Corkamas Isaiah Joe for Jermichael Green what what this was like the last thing that he added to the article he's like what can I do for Denver? I mean, they got two people coming back. We don't really know what to expect for them. And they got a bunch of role players that are like, eh, but not really. Uh, let me just put together something. And this is what he put together. He, these dudes would go to Denver and play 12 minutes total. Not a trade to talk about. Next. All right. Okay, now we got something. Jeremy Grant for Gary Trent Jr. Why would the, why would the, I'm trying to figure out why would the Toronto Raptors do this? We got OG know. We got Scotty Barnes. We got Pascal Siakam. We still got Thaddeus Young until further notice. We got Chris Boucher. We got a lot of six, seven and above players. And I I like the catch and shoot ability of Gary Trent Jr. He's like 24 and under contract for some time, right? Trent made 41% of his catch and shoot threes this season, given the Raptors. Yeah. So why would I trade this away if I'm the Raptors? For Toronto, Grant is the perfect physical profile to fit their roster of big athletic wings, okay? But I feel like they got too they got enough of them, personally. Grant would start in one of their forward spots along with Pascal, OG, Scotty, and Fred Van Vliet running the point. I mean, that would be a cool defensive lineup. I worry about their catch and shoot ability. They're going to generate a lot of open shots with this lineup, and OG's a good catch and shoot shooter. Scotty is still working on that going into year number two. Pascal's eye right there, but like, I feel like you need this dude. He's 23. I don't do this trade if I'm the Toronto Raptors, especially we consider that Jeremy Grant is going to be a free agent after this season. Hell, if I'm the Pistons, sure, I would do this. 23 year old to go with um, a catch and shoot dude to go with K cutting him that generates a lot of open shots. That's that's a match made in heaven, but I don't think the Toronto Raptors will do that deal. Warriors. Oh, I'm also talking for all 30 fan bases, so let me know in the comment section what you agree or disagree with as a fan of that organization. Christian Wood for James Wiseman and Moses Moody. If this is offered, if this offer is on the table and I'm the Houston Rockets, I am saying yes before the Warriors decide to wake up and, and start stop smelling the bro. This is an easy deal from the Houston Rockets. Give up the last year of Christian Wood for James Wiseman, who was number two overall pick a season ago, and Moses Moody, who was also a lottery pick that showed flashes this season, easy. But if I'm the Warriors, I don't do this. I think we've done an okay job. We're 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 building the young players like Jordan Poole, who's a G League player last season, now a most approved player candidate. We we've done a pretty solid job having Steph Curry and them be great, the older people be great, and still have the younger people develop. So I wouldn't do this if I'm the Warriors, but if I'm the Houston Rockets, easily. Don't even think twice about it. Go ahead and make that deal happen. I'm tired of talking about this trade. Russell Westbrook to be bought out in two seconds for John Wall. I'm not even having an opinion on that. We've talked about that a million times on this channel. Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Wancho Hearn, Gomez for TJ Warren on the signing trade. Th th this don't make me want to stay if I'm Donovan Mitchell. This don't make me want to stay if I'm Rudy Gobert. So, no. I'm um, Clippers. Oh, speaking of Rudy Gobert, Clippers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Rudy Gobert for Norman Powell, Zubats, and Luke Kennard. Honestly, 
if I am the Jazz, I might do this deal. But if I'm the Clippers, why would I do this deal if two years ago we exposed Rudy Gobert and made him unplayable in the playoffs? What do I have to, to gain? Now, me, as Kenny Beecham, I understand what you have to gain because now you got Rudy Gobert with good defenders around him and uh, this guy, Kawhi Leonard, and the other guy, Paul George. And now you don't have to worry about, you know, Rudy Gobert being on the island guarding the, the perimeter three-point shooter because a lot of people are not driving past Kawhi Leonard than driving past Paul George. But still, they were laughing at Rudy Gobert after that game. I don't think a lot of people on that team respect him enough for us to trade for him. <laughs> Being honest with you. Lake Show, this is the one that was in the thumbnail. John Collins, Kevin Herter, a first-round pick from 2023 that's top five protected for Anthony Davis. I... This trade is no. This trade is a no for me. This trade is a no for me on both sides. Here's why. I don't think Anthony Davis's value is at this low of a point. I understand, bro, can't stay healthy. He's never been able to stay healthy. But it was just two seasons, three seasons ago, they traded him away for Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, seven first round picks and picks. Like it was a ton of stuff. And if I'm flipping Anthony Davis now to John Collins, Kevin Herter, and one first round pick, I know we got the championship a few years ago, but now I'm looking at that tenure of these players together. And I'm like, damn, was that even, you know what I'm saying? No, bro. I, and I understand. Like, looking at the avenues to trade Anthony Davis, for sure. I, I think that's something the Lakers should be doing. But if this is the best package you could get, I'm running it back, bro. I'm, I'm running it back with Anthony Davis and LeBron and just hope that they stay healthy together because this package would not be enough. I think it could be cool. Like, it would be cool to see these players as role players in, in L.A. But let's be honest. If you have blank point guard, I don't think it's going to be Russell Westbrook, Kevin Herter, LeBron, John Collins, and blank center. You think you're going to win a championship with that? At the end of the day, that's what the Lakers are trying to do. LeBron is not getting any younger. You don't go there and try to be like, Le in two years, LeBron, Kevin Herter might be a little. No, no. Memphis Grizzlies. Oh, this is another not the trade. George Hill for a second. Uh, Miami Heat, Jeremy Grant for Max Struess, Duncan Robinson in a 2022 first round pick, which is what? The what is that? The 28th overall pick, 29th overall pick, um, because they were like the best team in the Eastern Conference this season. I mean, again, I think that you can probably get a lot more for Jeremy Grant from a different team. If I'm the if I'm the Miami Heat, this is an easy trade for me. I know Matt Struess has been really good for them, you know, coming from Chicago and everything, and just being a nice role player slash starter when they need him to. Uh, but he fits everything that they would want to do uh, for some of the things. He don't have the shooting that you might get from Struce, but either way, it would be a nice trade for them, I think. But if I'm Detroit Pistons, I feel like we can get a lot more. And, like, look at the previous trades we just looked at. Gary Trent Jr. I'm taking Gary Trent Jr. over this package of three. Maybe this package of three is more realistic. I don't really know. But I feel like we can get more. My, uh, Milwaukee Bucks, Kenrich Williams. He's a Kenny Hustle is a Kenny for all-star. Love him. If he got, went to the Bucks, I'd be upset as a um, division rival, if you want to call the Chicago Bulls that. It, not really. But if you want to call the Chicago Bulls a division rival, I don't really like him coming to Milwaukee because he's really good. Uh, Minnesota Timberwolves, John Isaac, and two second-round picks for Malik Beasley. Huh. Um, I'm going to go out on the limb and say that the Minnesota Timberwolves uh, locker room would not like having John Isaac in it, so they'd pass on this one. Next. Uh, Grayson Matthews, David Awaba for Kira Lewis Jr. Hmm, I mean, I guess I could kind of understand it from both perspectives. Do I love it? Absolutely not. But I, I, here's the rationalization behind it. If I'm the Houston Rockets, I'm taking a chance on a guy that basically was a lottery pick just a few years ago, 13th overall pick a few years ago. This show flashes before it towards ACL, and I'm giving you basically nothing. Uh, Garrison Matthews had a seven-game stretch where he was Larry Bird, and then after that, he ain't done much for the second half of the season. And then David Nwab is a good hustle player, but again, we're talking about a team with an average age of like 22 and he's a little bit older than that. And if I'm the Pelicans, these are just good role players that can play the ninth man, eighth man on your rotation for Kira Lewis Jr., who's coming off an ACL injury where you already have uh, some okay guards and maybe it's um, Devontae Graham or maybe it's Jose Alvarado and CJ McCollum and maybe you don't re really have room for Kira Lewis to develop. I understand it. Don't love it, though. Ah... Uh... The good old state of New York trade. Ben Simmons for Julius Randle, Alec Burke in a second. I, I, I don't know what's going on in this article. I'm enjoying it, though. If Greg, I can give you one thing. You know how to get people talking. You know how to get people talking. This is a bad trade. Nothing, nothing trade. Send um, Derek Favors back to the Nets for a second round pick. I mean, I guess you can play some backup center minutes behind. Nah, next. Duncan Robinson for Terrence Ross. Next. <laughs> Uh, Jackson Hayes for B-Ball Paul and Forkon Korkmaz. Uh, I guess the Pelicans, I think the only reason you would probably do this is so you don't have to extend Jackson Hayes. But I'd rather just extend Jackson Hayes to take this package, bro. I don't know what that extension would look like, but this ain't work. Uh-uh, next. I think that Greg is shooting like two for 24 so far. 
uh, Buddy Heald for Landry Shamit. This is actually not a bad trade. It's not a bad trade. So I don't actually two thumbs up, two thumbs up for the Phoenix Suns trade. Phoenix Suns get another like lights out shooter, legitimately lights out shooter, one of the greatest shooters in NBA history. Believe it or not, by his value and his percentage, it's a fact. You only give up basically a second round pick at Landry Shaman, who can only play every other game. It seems like uh, I didn't even know Dyer Sarge is still on the team because he tore his ACL, then tore his meniscus while rehabbing his ACL. Get well soon, by the way. I mean, I guess that's an okay trade for both sides. Langer Shaman is relatively young. You get a second round pick for a contract that you don't want anyway. Uh, Portland Trail, dang, the, the Indiana Pacers in like every trade. Portland Trail Blazers. Keon Johnson, no. I feel like you could get a first round pick for Miles Turner. And don't tell me Keon Johnson is the first round pick because we ain't really seen much from him in this rookie season. I don't like this trade. Matisse Thibel, four cut court <laughs> to the Kings. No. And I, under I understand that, you know. Some Philly fans have turned on um, Matisse Thibel because you can't really, his impact is not completely there night in, night out because he's a zero on offense. But even this trait feels disgusting. Justin can shoot, though. You get some shooters. Alex Lane can play second string uh, center. Two second round picks for it. I'm, uh, next. Oh, the Bulls are back. Vucevic. For Jacopo to Josh Richardson, the second round pick, if I'm the Bulls, I pull this trigger and don't think twice. I legit, I mean, maybe Vucevic has a resurgence here. I think the gap between Vucevic and Jacopo as far as impact on the court is not as big as mo most people think it is. I don't think it's that big, bro. So if I could get a younger Jacopo on a better deal and get Josh Richardson, who I guess could play some rotational minutes, he can't be worse than Troy Brown Jr., right? And to get a second from the Lakers, which low-key is like, what what's that, like the 37th overall pick, 38th overall pick? I would do this trade low key yep we get a defensive center that plays well in space i would do this trade Jacopo and, and demar de rosen back together i think i would do this trade if i was the bulls Is, am i crazy i don't know why the spurs would do this trade i don't think the spurs do this trade at all did they watch vucevic this season the complete season of vucevic if you did you probably you you not if you the spurs you're not pulling that trade all right toronto new orleans noel from kim birch sure new orleans noel is a good basketball player deal um if i'm the raptors utah jazz Wow, 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 wow. Mitchell Robinson on a sign and trade. Alec Burks back to Utah. Evan Fournier. And then a first round pick top 10 protected from Dallas in 2023. Wow. Do I not hate this trade either? Mitchell Robinson, Alec Burks, Evan Fournier. Now, this is not keeping Donovan Mitchell. I'm saying that right off rip. Donovan Mitchell don't see this trade happen and be like, yes, I'm so happy to stay here in Utah. But when you think about the value of Rudy Gobert, I don't hate this trade thinking about the value of Rudy. He might be one of the greatest defensive players of all time. This don't seem like a bad value for him in that long, the long contract. You get a young player, Mitchell Robinson. If you could teach bro to stay out of foul trouble and stay on the court, he's going to be solid. Alec Burks is a good NBA player, and Evan Fournier is a good NBA player. I know they got some contracts that might not be super favorable, but Evan Fournier shot 39% from three this season, if you didn't, if you didn't know. Alec Burks had a lot of good moments in the last two seasons, if you didn't know. I don't hate this trade. I don't hate this trade at all. And then New York, Rudy Gobert probably wouldn't survive in New York low key. They boo the hell out of him. All right, last one. Killing Hayes for Daniel D. Oh, we we didn't end it on a stinker. <laughs> we didn't end it on a sneaker, ladies a stinker, ladies and gentlemen. That was fun. At the at the bare minimum, that was at least fun. That's all we're here for, man. Let me know which trades you think were the best and which one was the worst. I'm in the comment section.